Rev up your engines. Today I'm going to answer Eddie Vasquez's question, who makes the best V8 engines these days? Now to answer that question, I'm only going to be talking about regular V8 engines. I'm not going to be talking about supercars that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And to answer it correctly, we'll get a little bit of history here. In 1915, Cadillac made the first really mass produced V8 engine, which was a 5.4 liter V8 engine. Now even though it was sort of mass produced, it was still in a luxury car and it was a rather expensive car. The first really mass produced car that used V8 engines were the Fords. In 1932, Henry Ford made a flathead V8 and that was the first really mass produced V8 used in normal cars, not used in either luxury cars or in trucks. Now Henry discovered how to make them so they work good, but they were less expensive to build. As an example, those V8s only had three main bearings on the crank instead of the usual five main bearings. So it cost less money to make, so it made it more affordable to put in regular cars. Now the main point of putting a V8 in was for more power. And since it was a V8, there were four on the left side and four on the right. So that V8 engine could fit in a vehicle that had a four cylinder engine because it's basically the same length of the four cylinder engine. You couldn't get a big six in there or even a straight eight. That would require a gigantic hood to fit it into. The V8 fit into a smaller space. And as it put out more power, people liked them. You could always get an option. You could get a four cylinder engine or you could get a V8 engine. People wanted power, hey, they'd put in a V8, like Bonnie and Clyde. They always stole Fords that had V8s if they could. So you get a lot of power out of a V8, but times are changing. As an example, a modern day four cylinder engine, heck, it can put out more horsepower than a V8 engine did just 20 years ago. So you can get a lot of power out of a four cylinder engine, which is making a lot of these V8s becoming kind of like the dinosaurs there sort of towards the edge of extinction. You'll see that a lot of companies, including Ford, are going more towards turbocharged GDI gasoline engines that are V6 instead of V8. They can still put out a lot of horsepower, but they get a lot better gas mileage. So in modern cars, at least most of the American cars, the V8 engines are becoming more and more specialized. As an example, they use them in all their racy cars. You can get a V8, in a Dodge Hellcat, you can get a V8 in a Mustang, and you can get a V8 in a Corvette. Now I know GM is coming up with, uh, I think they call it a ZR1, and it's going to have 755 horsepower, but it's going to cost over $120,000. So I really don't include that as a normal V8 engine myself. So I'll start with the LS9, which puts out 638 horsepower. It's got a supercharged V8 engine. Now I have to say it's a pretty good engine. It's an old fashioned design. It's still a push rod engine. It doesn't have overhead cams. It's pretty much a gigantic gas hog in that kind of form with the supercharger on it. It's not gonna get very good gas mileage. It's only got the regular valves per cylinder. It doesn't have four valves per cylinder and it's just got push rods in it. It's pretty old fashioned design, but it's a pretty strong engine. Now let's compare that to the Shelby GT500 that at least as of this time, was the most horsepower that Ford sold out of the factory, and it was 662 horsepower. Now the Ford Mustang engine was a much more modern design. It had quad overhead cams, variable valve timing, and it also had a supercharger to give it all that power. Now the original ones had some overheating problems, but they figured that out as time went on. It's a more modern engine. If you drove it not insane, you would get better gas mileage than the GM engine. But I mean, really, you got to take into consideration. People that buy those kinds of vehicles are driving like maniacs. I had one of the GTs for a while. Heck, I was getting like three miles a gallon in a thing because I was driving at full speed all the time. And that's pretty much what you're going to get in a race car if you drive at full bore all the time. Ford engine had insane power. There's no arguing that. I thought, hey, it's the fastest thing that you're ever going to get drive on the street that you can buy out of a factory. But that was before I drove a Dodge Challenger Hellcat. That thing had even more horsepower. It had 707 horsepower. 
with a supercharger on it. That's an insane amount of horsepower. Now the Hellcat engine, it's like the GM engine. It's an old style. It's a push rod engine. It's not a modern style by any stretch of the imagination. But I do have to say, they pretty much perfected that design if you want horsepower and speed. Say you're building your own vehicle. They've set it up that you can buy what's called a hell crate engine. You can buy just the engine and put it in the vehicle that you want. Because they know with that much horsepower, there's guys that want to get their hands on that engine. And I know people are going to say, hey, you're always poo-pooing uh, Chrysler products. But in this case, I do have to say that the Hellcat engine is the best V8 engine that's presently being built for normal cars. If you can call that a normal car. Considering the power they put out and the speed that people are driving them, I personally haven't seen any big serious problems with them other than people wrapping the cars around trees and stuff. And that's not the engine's fault. Remember, we're talking about best V8 engine here. Because being a push rod engine, it's a simpler engine. There's less stuff for it to break on. And really, as far as I can see, in the future, this is probably the end of the dinosaur age, and for most intents and purposes of mass production, V8 engines will probably just start to fade away. Except for crazy gearheads like uh, that new Corvette that they're talking about bringing out. If it starts at $120,000, eh, then it's becoming an exotic car. And there's lots of exotic cars out there that have V8 engines, V12 engines, but hey, for mass produced engines, the V8 engine probably be just like in a road warrior where Mad Max was driving one and they said it's the last of the great V8s because when you really think about it hey V8 engines were made originally for extra power now that even a small four-cylinder engine could put out a ton of power the V8 engines really aren't necessary yeah I mean you can get them to put out almost 800 horsepower but really who needs 800 horsepower if you can get 300 horsepower out of a little bitty four-cylinder engine hey that's plenty enough to drive us around in our vehicles one of the whirly cars out there it only had one horsepower and it got people around so we really don't need 800 horsepower cars to get ourselves from here to there. And sure, I for one will miss the great rumble of the V8. They got that unique sound to them. But as time moves on, I guess we got to move on too. And since this is the Thursday segment where I answer a viewer's question, place your own question on the YouTube comments below and I'll pick the best ones to make a single video to answer your questions. And where else can you find a guy with 50 years experience of fixing cars to answer your own question with a video? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.